to make a Rubik's Cube, um, you want to start off with a square, or rather a cube. Um, you're also going to want to round it off, um, and you could do that one of a couple different ways, but all of them start with making a um, subdivision. So you can either use control, let me turn my screencast keys on, you can either use control and a number to cycle through your subdivisions, or you can apply a modifier for subdivision, and then scale up. I'm using cycles, so the view is what uh, will determine both the viewport view and the rendered view. Um, three should be sufficient for this project. Now, you don't want a circle, you want a cube and you could either use shift and E to mark sharp edges uh, which I'm not going to do uh, because I want more control over these edges so I'm going to take that off and I'm going to add loop cuts um, this doesn't need to be scientific but I'm going to be kind of precise about it you can add two uh, loop cuts by hitting control R and then use your scroll wheel just up one, you can do as many as you want, but we just need two and then since we're on, oh you, you want to right click to set them just in the middle uh, since this is going to be on the Z axis up and down and you can tell by your uh, rotating key down here um, we're going to uh, hit S and Z and scale it up And we're going to do the same thing on the other three axes, or the other two axes, y and x. So put it there. Scale x, and put it here. Scale y. Again, that's just I'm hitting s and then y and then moving on the keyboard. Um, and this should be a relatively perfect cube looking configuration, so I'm going to hit SY and readjust. And there you have it. Now the reason we want to do it this way is because we want a nice curve along the edge, because when we set the material on this it's going to be a shiny plastic. Uh, we want something that's going to give a nice uh, kind of a plasticky white line against the light. And let me illustrate that by creating the light for the scene. I'm going to give it a floor that's just going to be a simple plane, and if your 3D cursor is anywhere other than right in the center, hit Shift C. It'll center everything on the screen and put your cursor at 0, 0, 0. We're just going to hit Shift A, add a plane. I usually scale mine up ridiculously large, uh, and you can do that uh, if you start over here. You know, it's going to be smaller. The closer you into it before you start scaling, the more you're going to scale. We're going to add a light, and uh, through cycles, you can basically add an emission, um, what is it, material to any object. I use planes, and I usually make them circles, uh, just by adding just you know control to subdivision on it. Um, placement for this isn't very specific. We're going to adjust it when we get into the render, but we want something so we can look at our test renders. So I usually move it down over here. Uh, hit R twice, just so you have like a free rotate, and then just kind of point it generally at the direction of the subject. Uh, I'm going to go into render mode by hitting Shift Z, or you can use the viewport shading options down here. Zoom in a little bit. Um, the reason I have the second box over here, by the way, is so that I can select things in wireframe mode uh, while I'm looking at a rendered view so I'll know exactly what I have selected. Now we're going to add a new material. It's going to be an emission. And if you don't see these same options, make sure you have Cycles Render selected up here. You might be on Blender Render. Uh, I believe Cycles is the default, but if you're not looking at what I'm looking at, make sure you have Cycles selected. I'm going to change it from a Diffuse and make it into an emission. And you have a slight light, but not much. Um, there's two ways you can make the light more prominent in the scene. You can either resize the source, uh, or you can increase the strength. 
by sliding this up or entering in a number manually. Uh, I'm going to make this pretty strong, a little bit bigger, and I'm actually going to put it out a little further from the object. Um, in my experience, if you want a softer light, you ha you'll have a larger light with less strength. Uh, something around that is fine. Uh, I don't have any direct numbers to give you as far as distances or strength. Usually I just kind of eyeball it. Um, now, you also want to make sure that when you're rendering, you don't have this big, huge light in your scene. Um, and the way that you do that, I'm going to hit control, uh, I'm sorry, uh, zero to go into my camera, which is the only camera that I had added in. Uh, my default scene has one camera in it. If you don't already have a camera, you can add one in. Um, and then hit control zero when it's selected to make it your main camera. You want to use the N key to bring up your, um, what is this, the properties panel? Uh, and then lock the camera to the view, because what that'll let you do is move around with your uh, scroll wheel and you know holding down Alt and dragging and uh, Shift Alt to pan. And it just it makes it easier to uh, put the camera where you want it instead of moving it and adjusting it and moving it and adjusting it, and it's just uh, faster. I'm gonna go back to Shift Z so we can see our object. If I'm zoomed out a little bit further, I'm gonna see my light. Uh, and this only becomes an issue if you're zoomed in uh, and you end up turning it around and you don't want the light in. But either way, if the light is in the scene, select it, go to the uh, object panel, and you're going to have ray visibility as one of the panels, and then just uncheck camera, and it removes it. And while I'm here, I'm also going to select my cube and hit G and Z move it down a little bit so it's flush with the ground. All right. Now, to make a Rubik's Cube, we're going to need uh, 3 by 3 by 3, assuming that's the kind of cube you're doing. Um, so I am actually going to do this with an array modifier. Uh, so we're going to add the array. We're going to use, I believe, three array modifiers. So the first one we add is going to be a three count. That's going to give you basically your x-axis. Um, I'm going to add another array. We're going to change the axis that it affects. So remove from the because the this is the x, this is the this is uh, the y, and this is the z. So we're just going to choose the next one down going to move it back one, up the count to three once again. And then we're going to add an another modifier for the array. We're going to again remove the x value and add it to z this time. And these are all just one, it's either one or zero. It moves it basically one blender unit up, and this cube happens to be one blender unit in size. And then make that three again. Now, the offset for this, as I'm eyeballing it, like I tend to do, is about perfect. If, for some reason, you wanted them to be a little bit further apart, you could make it so that it was, say, 1.1. Ooh, that's a little bit too big. So, let's see, 1.01. Oh, yeah. Uh, for my case, I'm just going to use 1, because I like, uh, I like them to be pretty, pretty close together. So now we have our cube. We're going to reframe. I'm going to uh, I usually end up making my floor round as well. And that's just a control two, and then scaling it up a little bit more. And we can use Shift Z to check the render. It's pretty nice. We're going to add a material to the cube. Make sure we have it selected. And we'll call this black plastic. 
Now we don't want to make it all the way black because if it's all the way black you're not going to get any detail. So we're just going to make it a little further up and we're going to change it from diffuse to glossy. And the default settings for this are usually fine, especially for this kind of cube. If you want to see what it looks like in slightly different light, you can move your light around in the scene, make it more intense, what have you. Now, what I was talking about before, and why we needed to adjust this light, is when I move this around, we're eventually going to see this little line in the corner turn into a line that goes all the way across the edge, like that. And because it has that curve, because it has that edge, the reflection is going to look a lot more realistic. And for this, we're going for a photorealistic render. Uh, in my case, I'm going to move mine over here because I like my fill light over to the right. And the light and the position of the camera both have an effect on where the line ends up. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Used RR to point it more at the subject, and I'm going to turn the intensity back up. Because now it's further away, and I want more light in the scene. Okay, that looks good. We're going to go back to wireframe mode. Now we're going to do the stickers. Now the stickers are going to add probably half of the realism of this render uh, to the object. And the reason it's going to do that is because we're going to trick the eye into making it think that there is a sort of a shine on the sticker. Because if you have a real Rubik's Cube, you'll know that the stickers across the sides are not only white, but they also have a slight shine to them. We're not going to worry about the shine, but we are going to add the white. So the first thing we're going to do is add just a regular plain mesh. And it doesn't matter where it is. We're going to zoom in on it, go into edit mode with tab, make sure the whole thing is selected. And then we're just going to extrude it down. How much doesn't really matter because it's going to be basically inside the cube. Uh, and we will determine how thick the sticker looks by how much we set it inside. Uh, we want the sticker to be, first of all, uh, have its, its normals on the right side. So uh, hit Control N to make the normals consistent, and that'll flip anything that's on the inside to the outside. We're going to add another subdivision surface. And for this one, since we don't care about what the edge looks like, we're going to use those hard edges I was talking about before. And that's just Shift E and drag it all the way until this pink line is all the way around. Do the same on the bottom. Okay. I think I'm going to add another level of subdivisions because the corners are going to be rounded. And we're going to do the same control loops as we did for the cube. I'm just going to eyeball these ones. And that's pretty good. Now it needs color. Before we give it color, we're going to put them in place. It's going to be shrunk down a little bit. It's going to be set in, just like I said. I'm just using G and Z to make sure that I'm grabbing it straight down. And we're going to set it just about like that. We're going to test the render, so if it's off by a little bit, we'll be able to see and we can adjust it from there. And I'm going to use an array for this, just like I did for the cubes. So we're going to add a new awesome material. Uh, we're going to add a new modifier. It's going to be an array. And this one is going to have to be offset more than just by one. So I'm just going to tick these up until it looks about right. Uh, 1.2 is a little too big, so we're going to do 1.0... I'm sorry, one point. One eight. That looks like it's just a little bit too much. So how about seven five? 
1.175. That's about right. Bring it up to 3, and the more off it is, the more you'll see it on the edge when you do the array further out. So I think I'm going to bump this down to 1.7, or 1.17, and that's just about right. I'm going to add a second one for the other plane. So this is across X, so I'm going to do across Y. And remove this, and whatever number you put up here for the X, you're going to put down here for Y. So in that case, that was 1.170. And up the count to 3. Now, this was actually for the front left, so I'm just going to uh, hit G and Y and move it back. Then you have your stickers. They don't have any color yet, but that doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to UV unwrap this, because you can't add color uh, to it without UV unwrapping it if you want more than just the one color. To illustrate, I could go into Material. We're going to see our black material for this. And I could take these stickers, and then just add a new material, and say if I want it to be the red side, that's fine. But we're not going to get that around the edge white that we want. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. I'm going to select the edge, just the top edge. And I'm going to open up T, my panel over here. Now this is 2.70, so they have these tabs. Or wherever you're going to find the shading in UVs, we're going to mark a seam. Then we're going to select the whole thing and unwrap. But we're going to do that looking straight down. Go to our UV editor. And we're looking straight down on it because we want to project from view. And actually, we just want that one face. We don't want them connected. So we're going to select just that top face. We're going to unwrap with a projection from view. And that's going to be the front face. We just move that over to the side. And then we're going to select everything and deselect by uh, hitting B to get box select, holding down Alt, and selecting the top face. And then we're just going to do an unwrap. We don't really care what the rest of it looks like because it's all going to be just one other solid color. So now if you select everything, you're going to have your leftovers. These are going to be white, and this is going to be whatever color. So, to create your texture in Blender, we're just going to open up a new image. doesn't matter how big it is, because it's not going to have any specific detail. We'll call it Diffuse, because it's going to be the color. Okay. Make sure you pack your uh, image so that it saves the image inside the Blender file. Now we're going to go to draw mode, or paint mode. We're going to select white, and we're just going to white out the whole thing. You can use F to change the size of the brush. And right now, strength is not set all the way. There we go. Nice, clean white. No change here. Now we're going to go back to the uh, view mode. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it over here. Because this is going to be where I'm going to put my white color. And then my other colors are going to go in this area over here. Now we're not going to see anything we do inside this image until we apply it to this object as a material. So select the object for the sticker, 
add a new material, diffuse is fine. Instead of having a color, click this uh, sort of selector box over here. You're going to use image texture. And instead of having to open up a texture from your desktop or downloads or whatnot, we're just going to select the diffuse texture that we created within Blender. So now, uh, if you have to go into edit mode to see where your uh, vertices are. We're going to go back to draw mode, or paint mode, excuse me. And in tools, we're going to select, uh, let's do, what color do we want to do first? We'll do red. I usually like to have my white on top, but if I do a white texture, you're not going to see anything, and that doesn't help the tutorial. So I'm just going to paint in a red section here, and you're going to see it just affect the top. So let's take a look at how that looks from the camera as rendered. Now it does look a little too thick, so we're going to want to move that down. So I'm going to go back over to my window over here. You don't need to. You can, uh, you can just go back to Z and do it wireframe or do it object mode or whatnot. But I usually leave it uh, rendering over here and do it in another mode so that I can really see what it looks like as I'm editing it. It's one of the beauties of using cycles. You get that live preview. Let's get right in there. As long as you can see an edge, you got a good idea. So I'm going to hit G and Z and just scale it down. We just want basically the faintest amount of line. If you if you pull up any picture of a good close-up of a Rubik's Cube, it's basically just kind of like, it's almost gray. It's, it's so not there. Uh, I think I'm going to move mine just a little further down. Oh, and when you're moving things in Blender, um, I have it locked to the Z axis because I hit G and Z, uh, but if you want to move it by smaller increments, if you hold down S or Shift, it won't move so much. That's just about perfect. Now, you got to do the other six sides. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the colors, and then we'll worry about the other sides as we come to them. So what do we need? We need blue. And I'm going to scale this down so I can color with more precision. We need orange. And you can put in whatever colors you like. Um, I usually prefer the colors that come on an actual Rubik's Cube. Uh, that's actually a little too dark in orange. Alright, we need green. It's a little bit of a darker green, so let's scale that down. Uh, we don't really need white because we have plenty of white to work with, uh, but we do need yellow. And there we have it. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this object. So just Shift D. And I'm going to make a copy of. Actually, I don't even think I need to do that. Stand by. Because once you make a duplicate of it, it's only going to affect that one instance of it. Uh, if you needed to make some change to the texture, you could make a duplicate of the texture by uh, adding a new material that way. But we don't need that in this case. So now that I've moved that uh, over, what I did was I made the duplicate. I went into the edit mode for that duplicate, selected everything so I could see my faces, and then just moved it over to whatever color I wanted it to be. So we're going to do blue next, that's right next to red. 
But actually, I'm going to move red to the side because I like white on top. It doesn't really matter, but it is a personal preference. So I'm going to go to the front view, hit R, 90, enter. And looks what side it is, that's fine. And I'm going to move it to the side. Now I'm just pretty much eyeballing this. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect because honestly the ones you buy at the store aren't perfect. You want to try to get an even uh, thickness for all the all the uh, stickers around the, the sides, but as long as the render looks good, you can do fine fine tuning and tweaking as you go. Now for blue, I'm going to do the same R90 enter, and then I'm going to do R90Z, and let's see, it's on the side just to the right of red, so I'm going to look at my back view, and that's, uh, I'm holding down control and one, this is one, that's control and one, lets you look at the opposite side of whatever you're looking at. You hit control. They're on the inside, so look at my front or side view. Pull it out. And that's probably the wrong side because not only is it not on the right side, but it's also you can see the back is uh, sticking out. So we just grab that along the y-axis and throw it over here. There we go. Way too far out. Now we should be able to see in the render all the stickers looking just about the way they ought to. The light's not going to be as good on this side, but we'll fix that in a bit. Let's see, those stickers are way too far in. So here's where we do a little bit of fine-tuning. There we go. Yeah, I can already see that's way too far in. We'll just pull that out. A little bit at a time until I get that nice edge I want. I'm going to do the same thing with red. I'm going to zoom out a lot more. Just pull that out, yeah, and that's that's just about perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. If I do it from the top view, it's actually easier to just take a duplicate, R90, go into uh, textured mode so I can see which side it's on. In this case, it's going to be the side just to the left of red, which happens to be green. And again, you don't need to follow the actual pattern on the cube, but I'm making basically a standard Rubik's cube. So I'm just going to, and I'm hitting Z to go back and forth between some of these uh, modes. Um, Control Z is pretty much the only one you don't want to do that with. Um, so if I have it on material, well that was interesting. Somehow, I removed my textures. Very interesting. Ah! My diffuse is gone. So something along the way that I did cleared out my diffuse uh, image which isn't too much of a problem, but a little annoying. We'll go into our paint. I'll just white it out again. I would love to explain what it was I did,
but I honestly don't know. Hazards of using random hotkeys while you're in the middle of a tutorial. I'm actually going to stop that render real quick. Go to shaded mode, or material mode. So that I know I know what I'm doing here. So that was red. It is fun to watch the textures paint on though. If you don't remember where the other one was, re-texture uh, it. I don't think it saved where the UV layout was. And these don't have to be perfect. I mean, honestly, I could make a dot and resize the face to be within it. I think when I hit Control Z, it might have undid some of those changes. Uh, because I was in this uh, pane. There we are. Do the same for this. Move it over here. That was green. Now, it does bring up another thing I can say while I'm uh, restructuring this. Um, I haven't saved this file at all. And I have lost hours of work because Blender failed in some way. It normally doesn't. Uh, actually, no, the one next to blue was orange. Uh, so yeah, it normally doesn't fail, but it can happen. It's not perfect, even though it's pretty close. So do save often if you don't like uh, losing work. And the next one down there was green. And then yellow. Alright. We're just going to close this because we don't need it. Are we? Uh, we will need it shortly. But I don't need that. Alright. Uh, so, red, blue, orange, green. Again, I'm going to do this from the top. Let's make a duplicate. Oop. We don't want to be in edit mode when we do that. Make a duplicate. R90. And I know that that turned the wrong way because it was turning around clockwise, so I'm going to do R180. Go into my shaded view. Alright, that's good. Now I can already tell that's taken out way too far. Uh, but to avoid confusion, I think I'm going to change that face first. Just grab that and move it over to green. There we are. Just move that in. The red looks like it's a little too far over, so we're just going to grab it and move it. Check the other edges, all right. We're going to recreate the one for white on top. Uh, duplicating. R90, let's see, X ought to do it. And then R180, X. Going to edit mode on that, take its face, and just pretty much move it to any white area. 
We can do the same thing, duplicate that, R180, and move it to yellow. And you can kind of see that if the floor wasn't there. Take, at the f take a look at the final render here. And we're going to look at a couple of different views and change some of the lights if we need to. Now I'm just rotating it so I can get that nice shine in there. There we go. Now, the, what I did for my last Rubik's Cube render was made a duplicate of it and placed it in the scene. So I'm just going to grab all this, deselect the floor, do a duplicate. And move it somewhere over here. Go to a shaded mode. And I'm going to hit grab and shift Z. And basically this says move it along every axis except for Z. So now I can place it wherever I want it while I'm still looking at my camera view. I'm going to do an R90 X. Let's see, R180 Z. And now we've got two different sets of colors. Now before I render this out again, I'm going to put a backlight. And I'm just going to copy my fill light here. Rotate it around. And I like having a backlight that's kind of a light blue color. So I'm going to make a copy of the current material so I don't make changes to the other material as I'm editing my backlight. Just give it a slight blue tinge and then go into rendered mode to make sure everything came out alright. Oh, and it looks like when it rotated, it didn't do it 100% accurately because of the, uh, it wasn't rotating in exactly the center. So let's just uh, zoom out here. Let's select that cube. Deselect the floor. Grab Z. Just place it. There we are. Now the backlight isn't exactly where I want it, so let me zoom out, go to the top view, and uh, adjust here. down here a bit. It's way too bright. There we go, that's a lot better. Just making minor adjustments here. There, I'm about happy with that. So we have a backlight, we have a fill light, we have our uh, fill light reflecting off of our cube here. And a little bit off the edges you can see in the back over here. 
Uh, and what I did on my first render was a little bit of depth of field, which is sort of, I guess, a mini tutorial I'll do here as well. So what you want to do is add an empty. It's going to be a plain axis. And we're going to eventually put it on some interesting part of the cube. Uh, but for now, we're going to name it. Call it Focus. Going to go to the camera, camera properties, uh, the depth of field setting. We're going to use the focus as the focus empty that we just created. And then we're going to put that on some interesting part, say uh, this corner here of this cube. Make sure it's exactly on that corner. Go back to our camera, start the render. Now it didn't do much because the depth of field isn't set. So we're going to select our camera, go back into the mode, and then change the size of the radius here for the aperture. And the more you do it, the more it should blur in the background. Unless I'm changing the wrong value. or I didn't set the focus correctly. Or I'm using their own camera. <laughs> Let's see, which camera am I looking through? Camera 001, here we go. There we are. Yeah, if you have two cameras, make sure in the lower left you're looking through the camera that you're actually affecting. We don't want it to be too dramatic. Unless you want it to be too dramatic. The whole thing is really left up to your discretion. Well, that's basically it from start to finish. Um, photorealistic Rubik's Cube Render in Blender 2.7. Uh, my name is Alex Smith, and thanks for watching.